be zooming it in and you up the street. Come on up here. Amen. We got, yeah, it's a blessing in here when it happens. Amen. Be a part of it. And your prayers when you come, they're a part of people's lives all over the world because of the podcast, prayer podcast. So, man, come and let's, let's get the right atmosphere so these prayers will work for people. Amen. All right. Death, burial, resurrection. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash DBR dot PDF. When you have it, say amen. amen. All right. All right. So first we're going to talk about his death, what the death of Jesus really did. All humans stand condemned before God. Amen. 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 We all stand condemned before God because man, the representative of mankind, which was Adam and Eve, sinned in the garden and messed it up for all humanity. Yeah, that's right. They were the first. And so because they sinned, all humans stand condemned before God. You know what this means? This means nobody's better than anybody. You're no better than, it. look at somebody and say, you're no better than anyone else this leveled the playing field and made us all equal I know folks would like to say well, but God had a chosen people God chose a group of humans to bring forth Jesus Christ amen, amen? amen. but they weren't preferred over anybody the Bible said the ground opened up and swallowed some of them up for acting a fool they were put in bondage in Babylon so God, even though he chose them to bring forth his son, they were not special humans in that they would avoid the punishment of God when they sin. Yeah. Amen. So that's why we can't be putting a color on it and the black folks are the chosen. No, no, it doesn't work that way. We're all responsible for our own behavior. Amen. We're responsible for our own behavior. So all humans stand condemned before God. We're equal in that fact. Without the grace and mercy of God and the power of Jesus Christ's blood, we would all go to hell. Has nothing to do with our color. Has nothing to do with our creed. Has nothing to do with our race. Has nothing to do with our ethnicity. It has everything to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Either we're saved or we're condemned. Amen. Don't you start that mess in here. You know, the church doesn't grew so big, I can't keep up with it. But don't you start that black mess in here. We ain't no racist church. Look at all these different nationalities and different things. Don't you start that foolishness in here that's going on in your crazy family. We believe Jesus Christ can save anybody that desires to be saved. And we're no better if, unless we repent. I don't care if you think you from the tribe of Issachar. Unless you repent, you going to hell. Just like the folks in Exodus when the ground opened up and devoured them. They went into hell alive. And they were all from the 12 tribes. Can I preach in here? I know I ain't doing nothing like, the, like, like they say in the rap game. I'm spitting the truth. <laughs> Kelsey like that. <laughs> Spoke her language. You're like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it is. So don't come in here with that foolishness. Our sins separate us from him whose character is pristine holiness and perfect justice. That's his character. So when we sin, we are separated from God. Amen. We all deserve the death penalty because of our sin. Amen. Amen. That's why we can't judge other folks' sins. Amen. Now we can judge other folks in terms of helping them straighten out, get, get straightened out and stop doing what they're doing. Amen. I don't like the folks that say judge not and then just leave it. No, there's a righteous judgment. Amen. There's a righteous judgment, but 
During that righteous judgment, we have to always consider ourselves. You won't be so hard on folks if you consider yourself. Amen. But we, yeah, well, we, I mean, you can't be a parent if you don't judge. Amen. Every whooping is preceded by a judgment. Amen. The gavel has to be banged. Yes, he qualifies for a beatdown. The verdict is in. Jury, have you come to the conclusion? Yes, I believe that Jonathan deserves a beating. Okay, now I have to carry out the sentence. So that's judgment. Judgment was passed. Amen? So we got to do some judging, but we don't judge people outside of who we are. We have to keep ourselves in mind. Amen? And the Bible said if you judge yourself, you won't have to be judged. <laughs> judge yourself. Quit looking away when you combing your hair in the mirror. Looking away, just trying to look just at the hair. Don't want to make eye contact because you know you in sin. <laughs> Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is what? Death, but the free gift of God is what? Eternal life in who? There's not eternal life in anyone else. There's eternal death in others, but there's eternal life only in one. Amen. Jesus died to offer us a free gift of eternal life. The death of a righteous one is sufficient payment for the life of unrighteous one. So the death of a righteous one who was, there's only one that was righteous according to the scripture. And that's Christ. And because he was righteous, he could die and pay for all of our unrighteousness. Amen. First Peter 3 and 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for unrighteous, that he might bring us where? to God being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit so his death brings us to God amen so no matter how sinful you were no matter what you went through no matter how you were raised no matter how dysfunctional your upbringing may have been no matter what your record looks like Jesus died to bring us to God. Amen. Amen. And he'll turn your misery into ministry. Now, that don't mean start a church, but just your testimony can actually bless somebody. Amen. Your testimony of how you were ratchet and hood and God saved you and redeemed you. That testimony can help someone else. Amen. So Jesus died to offer us a free gift of eternal life. Then he died to teach us how to die. He died to teach us how to die. By giving up his life for us, he set the perfect example of how we should give up our lives for others. Folks, a lot of folks ain't going to make it into the pearly gates because they can't give themselves up. Some folks are hurt so bad they won't trust anyone with their love. They won't give themselves up. And they don't understand this is what Jesus did. He died and he gave his life up for us as an example of what we should do. Though he was ridiculed and shamed, he stayed his course and did what he purposed to do. So no matter what they put in his way, he made sure he did what he purposed to do. This is another example of what happened with his death. This is the best example of how we should live our lives and continue on in spite of adversity and pushback from others. So you don't let anybody stop you from the prize. We talked about that last week. If you're going to reach the goal, you don't let anything stop you. Jesus set that example. Nothing stopped him. From doing what he was purposed 
to do. You know that's the devil's job to stop you from being who you are purposed to be. I tell people all the time, it's, well, I wrote it in my book, if y'all ever read the book. It's a very good book, I promise you. Y'all, anybody read the book? I'm not saying that to sell it, because I don't even think we have any. But it's a, very, it's a very good book. But I talked about in the book how I believe that God announces us when we're born. Because he announces our purpose. And this is why. How else would the enemy know to target certain people? He, how would he know to target certain lives? To try to stop their, you know, them from becoming who God has called them to be. And so I believe that. And I believe the devil knows who we're intended to be. And so he tries to stop us from being that. He gets victory from stopping you from your victory. So if he can put something in your way to cause you to keep missing the mark, he's pleased that you're not becoming who God intended. Can I keep preaching in here? This is the best example of how we should live our lives. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made what? Right. The righteousness of God in him. So he had no sin but was made sin in our place so that we could experience the righteousness yeah. of God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now everybody in here needs to know why Jesus yeah. died. I know preachers that I mean they preach blood, sweat, and tears. He died and don't know why. Why did he die? For our sins. How does he die for our sins? I don't know. But I know he died. I need you to know. Amen. I need you to know that he became sin for our sin. To pay the penalty of sin, which is death. So to pay the penalty of sin, which is death, he had to die for us. Amen. Amen. Some folks, Resurrection Sunday is all about Easter baskets and eggs. Because they don't know the truth. Amen. And don't sit up in church for years and not know this stuff. You should be able to witness to somebody. Amen. You ought to be able to put a Hebrew Israelite to shame. Now don't go do it. I know, you know, don't get froggy. But you ought to be able to put that stupid stuff to shame. So who did Jesus, Jesus only die for one people? One color? Yeah, yeah, only the blacks, the Negroids, the Negro land people. So all white people going to hell. That's, that, that's foolishness. And that's nowhere in the Bible. Amen. So you need to know the word so you can combat that junk. They still downtown. I thought the pandemic would have... I know the masks just go right along with the rest of the costume. But I think all the Mortal Kombat characters had some kind of face covering. But they still down there. And I'm just like, what? Where did this come from? But it comes from their hurt. They want to be special. Man, you know how to be special? Take care of your kids. Take care of your wife. Get a job. Get a check. Check stuff. Check stuff. Every stub shouldn't be a government penalty stub. You should have a check stub. I don't make you feel. Am I telling the truth, man? Don't it feel good when you're making money? When you make some money. time you spend it on the street coda those are hours that need to be clocked there's no grant for that 
Amen. Let's talk about the burial of Jesus. The burial is very significant as well. Jesus was buried so that a resurrection could take place. So the burial was just a setup so Jesus could defy it. Because a resurrection had to take place. This is significant according to scripture to show the power of God to restore life after death. So he had to show us he had the power to, uh, to restore life after death. And it couldn't be like immediate somebody just died. But it had to be over a three day period. Three days to make sure he was dead. And he did this so we would have hope in our death. That's why I'm not afraid of death. Because I know on the other side of death for me is life eternal. Why would I be afraid of losing what I have on this earth when I know on the other side I'll be in glory with the Savior? The only reason I'm living anyway. The only reason I'm alive anyway. I'm going to be with the reason. Ain't nothing here keeping me here. In comparison, are you kidding me? So this is why. He did this to give us hope in our death. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, God will do what? Bring to him. Amen. I want to sleep in Jesus. Because if you sleep in Jesus, that's all you're doing is sleeping. Jesus humbled himself in death. This is very important. He allowed himself to be under the power of death for three days to fulfill the word of God and suffer in a state of humiliation for us. You know, at any moment, Jesus could have been like, nah. And death would have been scared. But he went under the power and allowed himself to be under the power of death for three days to suffer in a state of humiliation. Can you imagine the humiliation? I'm not talking about humans. I'm talking about spiritually. Can you imagine what Satan and his kingdom and all the demons and devils and darkness was saying when Jesus was under the power of death? We got him. We got him. But you know they was checking every hour. <laughs> I had heard somewhere in them scriptures that he might. Matter of fact, roll a big old stone in front of it. Put some guards on the outside of it. Because I had heard that it was possible that he might. <laughs> and you know Jesus just let, I'm not going to even try to personify Jesus. I'm going to say Jesus like, but I'm not even going to do that. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. That's not appropriate. But I know he knew his power, but he put himself under that power and allowed the kingdom of darkness to boast and brag. There was one, what, I forgot which passage it was, but he went up to him and the, 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 the scribes, the Pharisees, and the officers and stuff came to him. He said, oh, you're going to arrest me now. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're we going to take you. He's like, man, I was preaching and I was in front of all y'all for all this time and none of y'all touch me. He's letting them know, bro, you can't touch me till I let you touch me. He said, I've, I've been preaching in the temple. I've been hanging out. I've been hanging over here, talking over here. Did none of y'all do nothing? He said, oh, but now the power of darkness is ready. So I guess I'll let y'all do this. But he let, he stayed in that state of humiliation for three days. Though death was over him 
for a while, look at somebody say for a while. For a while, he would ultimately conquer death to prove to us that though we suffer for a while, look at somebody and say for a while, for a while. victory is coming. Yeah. We only suffer for a while. Jesus gave us this example. He wanted us to see suffering is just going to last for a while. And then victory is coming. Because just like he submitted himself to death for a short while, victory had to come. 1 Peter 5 and 10. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered. How long? A while. He's going to make you perfect, established, strengthen and settle you look at somebody say it only lasts for a while it only lasts for a while the old song said weeping may endure for a night but joy what cometh in the morning so I don't know why you worried about it Jesus set the example if death could not hold him down and he got up victoriously you can get up from whatever the devil's holding over you. Amen. Look at somebody say, get up from that. Don't you let death, don't you let the devil hold you down. Amen. He's a, you know the devil is a whisperer with his old hot stank breath. Whispering. Oh, you can't make it. Oh, it's never going to get better. Oh, you ain't going to ever have that. Oh, you're not going to ever be able to do it. Oh, people aren't going to ever forget what you did. Uh-uh, you, you're doomed. You, that's the, you need to tell them and say, look here, devil. I have an example of victory in the word. So I'm following the word, not your words. And the word tells me, after I suffer for a while, victory is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This ain't no hype message. This is true. This is the truth. Now, if you don't want victory to come, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those that have suffered for a little while. And it's time for the breakthrough. It's time for victory to show up. It's time for death to be defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This makes his burial significant. Oh, and the resurrection. They put the biggest stone they could find. But it didn't take nothing but a thought to roll that stone away. Oh, my goodness. Man, y'all think Hollywood got some special effects. The, they, they, are, they are stealing from the Bible. The Bible got all the special effects. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Don't let me have to preach Arrow Man 4 again. There's about three or four superheroes I need to put in there. I need to preach those one day. But they just stealing. It all started in the Word with God. Amen. Amen. God can defy any law that He made. He made gravity, he can fly in it. <laughs> he made a dimension, he can duplicate it and make a multi-dimension. He can defy any law he made. <laughs> My goodness. Man. Jesus rose. So that we can be what? Resurrected. Resurrected. Just as he defied death, we will defy death. Yes. Look at somebody say, you're going to defy death. <laughs> Just as he ascended to the Father, guess what? We will ascend to the Father. Look at somebody say, you're going to ascend to the Father. <laughs> Just as he conquered evil we can conquer evil look at somebody say conquer evil <laughs> Jesus did all of this so we can partake in it all 
John 14 and 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, all this cold stuff y'all see me doing. And Jesus did some stuff. He walked on water. Walked on water. Kanye wasn't walking on water. He was slushing around in slush. <laughs> Bruh, two inches of water ain't walking on water. You splash it. Jesus walked on water, calmed the whole sea, spoke to the wind and the waves and said, chill out, peace be still. And everybody looking, man, what kind of dude is this that can speak to the winds and the waves and they do what? Obey him. Man, oh, I can go old and old. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And what? Greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my father. So he's like, I'm done. I'm going to the father. So I'm going to leave the rest up to y'all. And greater things you're gonna do. Greater works than these. Jesus' resurrection conquered all evil. How much is all? All. All evil. All evil. Conquered all evil. Evil is conquered. I know folks like, well, but why is there so much killing? That's people. But evil's been conquered. Amen. People going to keep being people until the Lord come back and stop them from being people. Or Bill Gates stop them from being people. That's, that's what they working on. <laughs> but Jesus' resurrection conquered all evil. He not only gave us victory over our sins, but over the perpetrators of sin as well. So you don't just have victory over your sins. You have victory over the demons and the devils that are convincing you to sin. The perpetrators of sin. Yeah. You know, the devil, the only way he can defeat you is with fear. If you are scared of him, then he's got something. If you're not afraid of him and you're in Christ, he's got nothing. Because Jesus took authority over him. Took the teeth out of the lion. Just a big cat. No teeth, no claws, just a lot of noise. Yeah, the perpetrators of sin. Every evil being, evil work, and evil intent will be put to an end because of the power of the what? Resurrection. He rose with how much power? Oh. So if he rose with all power, all power is his. And if all power is his, we're filled with his power. We have power over everything. Yeah, the devil tried to stop you from coming to church this morning. Because he knew this message was going to get preached. Something happened to your Easter skirt and Easter suit. And you was going to miss. <laughs> That's why we do the ABC t-shirt. So you don't have to worry about it. Amen. You don't have to be put piece in the outfit together. Because <laughs> you, you didn't need to miss this. You didn't need to. You needed to hear this. You need victory over your situation. You need to be reminded that you have victory. You need to be reminded to not be afraid. You need to be reminded of what Jesus did on Calvary and what his resurrection really meant and that you really do have the victory. He rose with how much power? All oh, power. The old folks say power. Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, 
All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That pretty much includes everything. How much is all? All power is given unto him. And if we be in him, we have access to everything we need. Amen. All you got to do is pray on it and believe. You need to get in the habit of that. Stuff start happening in the unknown. I'm not receiving that right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm using the power of God. He has all power. That means I have power over this. I'm not allowing this to get me back like that again. I'm not going back to that thought process. I'm not going back down in the dumps. I'm not going to be depressed anymore. I'm going to stand up against the devil and I'm going to speak the truth of God in victory because the word declared it that I have the victory over sin. And I have victory over the perpetrators of sin. And every evil being, every evil work, every evil intent comes under the subjection of the power of the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and say, I have all power. All power. That's what all this is. Social media. It's just to keep reminding you of your flesh. That's all it is. Because the more you focus on your, fl on your flesh, the less spirit you have. The less of the Holy Ghost power you have. That's all it is. Spinning you in circles every morning. You log on and read what the world is saying. What the world is doing. Watch this documentary and this documentary. And this, this, this preacher and that preacher. And you just toss to and fro. That's why they designed it that way. To captivate you. To make you forget the power of the resurrection and who we really are in Christ. The power we have over the devil's kingdom. You keep reading that stuff, you think the devil is in power. But the Bible said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen? Summary! Short one today. Because he rose with all power, we now have power over sin. Power over the enemy. And this is the good part. Power to currently reside in the kingdom of God. Now somebody said, now my, you know, Jesus said that the, this, the kingdoms of the world are not his. He was saying, I have a kingdom. And his kingdom is here in existence right now. You're in it. That means you're not subject to the rules of the world. You may be subject to the laws of the land, but you're not subject to what's going to happen to the world. We are in the world, but not of this world. Our rules are different. When everybody else is hungry, we're going to be fed. When everybody else is thirsty, we're going to be drinking. When everybody else is broke, we're going to have money. When everyone else needs clothes, we're going to be clothed. God is going to take care of us because we are members in his kingdom. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, do you really know who you are? Jesus rose not only to redeem us, but to offer us a what? A better way to live. Better, better way to live. Better way to live. Yeah, your dysfunctional situation can be better in Christ. Your marriage can be better in Christ. Your children can be better in Christ. Folks on your job will act better because you're in Christ. Listen to what I'm saying. We're in an invisible kingdom, but it's very real in us. Folks send me junk every day. Oh, they about to do this. Oh, this about to happen. Oh, this about to happen. Some of it I look at it, but I'm not worried. I'm not worried about any of that. Because I'm in a kingdom inside this world. And I'm not in the world's kingdom. So my faith, my hope, is not in this world's kingdom. My belief is not in this world's kingdom. Hallelujah. 
Though this world is not our home, we can still experience godly kingdom living. Amen. Now, godly kingdom living, you got to be godly. See, that's why folks don't experience. They don't experience it because they hate somebody. They mad at somebody. Got a problem with somebody. Everybody looking at me. Nobody like me. Everybody this and that. You know, they do all of that stuff. And they, they, they have an issue. Just having issues. So they can't be in the kingdom of God. You can't be in the kingdom of God unless you love everybody. Let me, wipe, let me, let me give y'all a minute to think about that. Because some folks think they really think they're heaven bound. And they own the sand, satanic chariot. You don't see your leg burning? <laughs> yeah, to be in the kingdom of God, you got to forgive folks. Amen. You got to love folks. You can't be carrying stuff in your heart. Godly kingdom living. In order to be in God's kingdom, you got to be godly. And Jesus gave his life for everyone. So you have to be willing to give your life, even to the ones you don't like. I'm pretty sure there were some folks, Jesus, well, I, I, I can't speak for him. But if that had been me, <laughs> yeah. But he loved everyone to the point of death. The Bible said, for God so loved the what? The world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. Whosoever. You mean the whosoever black? That don't make no sense. If it said whosoever shall believe on him. Whosoever is whosoever. Whosoever. The Satanists. The witch, whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. He loved the world that much. He loved everyone that much that he's given everyone a fair chance to be in his kingdom. And it's not just the kingdom after death, but it's the kingdom during life. Amen. I walk around and I know I'm in a kingdom. Yeah, I look at things differently than the world. I process things differently than this society, Jeff. I don't walk around worried about what they're going to do with this pandemic. I look at that as foolishness. Because one, I ain't afraid to die. Because I know I'm going to be with him. Amen. And two, I don't trust none of their research, no way, because it's just a bunch of people. Why would I put that, conf that kind of confidence in some people when my confidence is in the one who made the people? Wouldn't he know better? Wouldn't he know what's going on in my body? Wouldn't he know when I'm in danger? Wouldn't he know? You think he's going to punish me for coming to worship God with his people? With his people? When everywhere else in the Bible, he blessed the gatherings of his people. He defied nine plagues that was all over the whole world, but they didn't affect his people. I'm not getting punished with the world. Because I'm in the kingdom. Look at somebody and say, I'm in the kingdom. So all we have to do is accept him and his words as the only way to live. And our lives can be full of joy and peace. Amen. 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 Romans 14 and 17. Ooh. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It ain't about any of that. But it is righteousness. Peace and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and say, I have joy in the kingdom. I have peace in the kingdom. I have righteousness 
in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray, but I'm not going to have you come up because we have this, but I want to pray with you so that this message, man, this death, burial, and resurrection, I hope it made you understand how special we are to God. I hope it made you understand how special we really are to God. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand to your feet. Hallelujah. And we're just going to pray right where we are. You don't have to come up. But I want everyone to just bow your heads. And we're going to just believe that we are in the kingdom. And we are not in the kingdoms of this world. And what is going on will no longer worry us. Not going to give us heart palpitations and high blood pressure. <laughs> we're not going to be worried about what this world is doing. We're going to trust in the true and risen Savior. He defied all of these things to show us that there is hope for us in this world. So just bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this message. God, we thank you, Lord, for your death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you, Lord, for the gift that was given to us of eternal life, freely given, the way being paid. All we have to do is believe on you. So right now, Father God, we believe on your son Jesus' death. We believe that it was enough to pay the penalty for all of our sins. We believe that no matter who we once were and what we once did, it can be changed by the power of the death, burial, and resurrection. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we accept that newness. And not only do we accept that newness in our hearts, but Father God, we accept our position in your kingdom. That we may dwell in a world inside of this world. We may dwell in a dimension inside of this dimension. Father God, where your rules apply to us, your blessings come to us, and our hope, faith, and confidence lies in you alone. As the rest of the world is afraid, as they are worried about what will happen next, Father God, our trust is in you. So we put all our faith in you, all our confidence in you, and we believe that you're going to see us through these end times. You're going to see us through these wicked times. You're going to see us through these uncertain times because we're in your kingdom, and your kingdom is filled with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we receive it. We receive it. We receive our position. We receive our place. And we stand in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. I'm going to go through something just real quick before Julian does this. Just to kind of explain because I don't like people doing something that they don't know what they're doing. So a lot of people when we were growing up, some were allowed to take communion, some weren't. They'd push the kids out the way. We'd be in line. They'd make us go back to our seat. Afraid we was going to die if we took it. Some adults would just, no, nah, that's all right. I, this week I, I had a rough weekend. <laughs> so, whatever. <laughs> And so let me shed some light on just a few things about the Lord's Supper before he comes. This is not going to take long. We are, man, it's early. Amen. 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 And don't be counting on this communion to hold you till you get to the restaurant. This is not for food. This is in remembrance of Jesus Christ. So let me run through these real quick. First of all, none are spiritually worthy to partake of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. No one is worthy as humans. Romans 3 and 10 says there is none righteous. No, not one. So we're not worthy on our own strength. We're not worthy. Amen. You ain't been good enough. Amen. You ain't been good. I know you think you good because you talk about other folks bad. You know, you, you think you're better than somebody if you're doing that. But you're not. 
So you're not worthy either. Amen. It takes, the, it takes what Jesus did for us to make us worthy. It, it, um, it is the actual ceremony itself that is representative of the price paid for us. So confessing your sins and applying the blood and body of Jesus makes communion a must for all believers. So you confess your sin and then you take communion. Okay, Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a what? Yeah. A gift of God. So you ask God for his gift. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Because you're not worthy on your own. That's right. That's right. There'd be no communion if we measured it by our worthiness. Because of the sacrifice, listen, this is the one that's getting folks sick. Because of the sacrifice of laying down his life for us, we must be in good standing with our brothers and sisters. <laughs> Can I say that? Yes. Got to be in good standing with our brothers and sisters. The Lord's Supper was brought up in this passage because of the divisions of the believers in Corinth. That's when Jesus talked about administering communion. I mean, well, not Jesus, but that's when Paul talked about, talked about administering it because he first talked about the divisions. He said, 1 Corinthians 11 and 18 through 20, for first of all, first, first is what? First. So first of all, when you come together in church, I hear that there be divisions among you. And I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies. See, he said, if there's divisions, then somebody's lying. Somebody's lying to cause divisions. <laughs> so he says, for there must be heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. So there are heresies and lies going on where people are trying to prove that they're better or more worthy to take it than other folks. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, meaning y'all aren't even ready to do this because you're coming in the wrong spirit. So we want to make sure we have the right spirit. Amen. Amen. But we want to make sure ABC got the right spirit anyway. Whether we take a communion or we just existing as a church, we're not going to be in here with issue with other folks in here. Amen. You want to make me mad? Tell me you got a problem with somebody in here. That's a division. Can I keep going? Partaking of the Lord's Supper without discerning the Lord's body causes many to be weak, sick, and asleep spiritually and naturally. Folks die when they do this. And I'm not saying you took it and then messed up and oh, it's going to come and not, no. But I'm saying folks that leave the faith or are reprobate and won't change, they have issues with trying to honor the memorial of Christ and having that lifestyle. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11 and 30, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many die. Yeah. So this is how serious this is. Christ wants us to take this seriously. Now if you love him and you living for him, you gonna live for him, then I'm not talking about you. But those of you that's in here to just do witchcraft, I wouldn't be chewing this bread. Amen. But those that want to recognize the memorial of Jesus Christ, it is good to do, and he tells us we should do it. It's not commanded, but it is suggested. Amen. Forgiveness of sin and a desire to live for God is imperative to taking the Lord's Supper. Can I say that again? Forgiveness of sin and a desire to live for God is imperative in taking the Lord's Supper. It means more to him when we live consistently for him rather than just cleaning up for a memorial. Amen. We don't believe in Fat Tuesday. 
curtain before Ash Wednesday. We're not cleaning up for today. We're cleaning up because we need to be cleaned up. Amen. Amen. All right, Julie.